I am Uncle Sam FM, and this is part three of my Playing MLS and Football Manager 2020 video series. And in this episode, I'm going to look at player acquisition. How do you actually build your squad? How do you sign players in MLS and Football Manager? So first of all, I'm just going to give you a list of the methods, and then I'll kind of break down each one, I'll hopefully explain it a little better. First of all, there are trades. And then there are what's called discovery signings, although I don't believe that FM actually uses this terminology anymore. Um, even if it doesn't, I kind of explain what that is. And then there are homegrown signings. You have free transfers, also waivers. You have the drafts like the super draft. You have the reentry draft, and you have the waiver draft. So there are really kind of seven different methods for acquiring players. Now, for the most part, you're going to only use three or four of these, but we'll explain each one in a little more detail. So first of all, trades. Obviously, this is more common in American sports than it is around the world, but in FM, trades, what all it really is are transfers between MLS clubs. So if you are wanting to acquire a player from another MLS club, you do it through a trade rather than what the game would call a transfer. Now, there are several assets that you can use in trade negotiations when acquiring players. You can offer allocation money, or the other team could offer allocation money. This includes general allocation money or targeted allocation money, and we'll explain those what those are in a little bit um, later. You can also offer current players. If you want a player, you can offer one of your players for a straight up trade, or you can mix. You can offer a player some allocation money. You can also offer draft picks, such as super draft picks. So if you don't really value your draft picks very highly, you can use those as trade assets. It's kind of like cash. International slots is another asset that can be used in trade negotiations. You can often trade to acquire these, as obviously they are at international slots is a desirable possession. If you can, the more international slots that you have, the more international players you can have in your squad. So these can be valuable depending on what type of type of team you're looking to build. Another kind of uh, interesting asset that you can use in trade negotiations is player rights. Now, what is a player right? Well. In MLS, when a player leaves the league, when they leave Major League Soccer and they're, they're sold by the league to a foreign club, if that player is ever to come back to MLS, they would have to return to the team that owns his rights. So if I sign Fred Jacobson to a three-year contract and he leaves after the first year to go play for Juventus, if he wants to come back, he can only play for me because I own his rights. Now, if there's another club in the league that would like to sign him, they first have to negotiate a trade with me. And that is an asset. You can tr you can use players that have left your team, you can use those as assets in trade negotiations. They're not even on your team anymore, but you still own their rights and you can trade those rights to other teams. So Trades can involve any combination of these assets. You can offer allocation money and players. You can offer players and draft picks. You can offer international slots and players. Any combination of these assets you can use to acquire players or to acquire these assets from other teams. Maybe you want to increase your allocation money budget. So you can do that by offering players to other clubs in MLS for an allocation money amount. Another type of acquisition are discovery signings. And really what all this really amounts to are foreign transfers. These are players that you sign from other clubs from outside the United States. You can use your club's transfer budget. And these would include loans. So if you loan a player in from a club outside the United States, this would count as a, you know, kind of a discovery signing. Now, there are now no limit to discovery signings. There used, this used to be limited, but you can sign as many as your club can acquire based on your budget and on your squad rules limitations. <coughs> Homegrown signings is another type of player acquisition, and these are simply players that are signed from your academy team. Now, there's no limit to the number of academy players that you can sign. 
And every team in MLS has an academy. It's one of the requirements for having a team in the league. And some academies are better than others. Some develop better players than others. But it's a good idea to scout your academy team, which you will already have scouting knowledge. When I say scout, I mean look at your academy team, look at the players, and see if there's anyone there that you believe could potentially be an MLS um, player or possibly simply to use in the future as a trade asset. And free transfers is another type of player acquisition in MLS. This is really not much different than uh, free transfers with any other club. Um, there is no limit to the number of free transfers that you can make. Now, if you want to, and off, most often this is used to sign free American players. Um, however, if there is an American youth player, you will not be able to sign them as American youth players can only be acquired through the Super Draft or by signing a cat, your academy youth players. Now, waivers is another interesting dynamic that most people outside the United States are unfamiliar with. So players that have been released from MLS teams are, are placed on what's called waivers, on the waiver wire. And kind of the best way to sort of think about it is like a clothesline. So if I have a player I want to let go of, I pin him up to the clothesline, and then all the other teams get in order. Right? And he's now on this waiver wire, and teams have will have two days after the player has been waived or released to make a claim. Now, these obviously, these are only other MLS teams. So the way it works is if you see a player that's been waived, you put in an offer on that player. You're a claim. You try to claim that player. Now, the way the waiver order determines which club has the highest priority when making a claim. So when you make a claim on a waiver on a player that has been placed on waivers, if you're the highest in the waiver order, you will be successful. However, if a team above you in the waiver order makes a claim, then they will get that player. So the waiver order is determined by how the teams finished in the previous season. So when 2019 is over, the team that finished in last place will now be at the very tip top of the waiver order. So the first player is wa that's waived, they will get the first opportunity to claim that player. If they pass, then it goes to the second team. And if the second team passes the third team, so it's whichever team that's highest in the order makes the claim gets the player after making a successful waiver claim and acquiring the player that club will then drop down to the bottom of the waiver order so if fc dallas was at the top of the waiver order a player gets waived and they claim that player and acquire the player then fc dallas will now be at the bottom of the order all of the other teams in the league will be above them and will have dibs on the player that the next player that gets waived it's a little confusing, but it's an interesting way to sort of help clubs that uh, had a rough year and need to sort of rebuild. Giving them the first bid, first dibs on players that get released is a way to help them be more competitive. Next is the Super Draft. This obviously is kind of unique to American sports. This is made up of college and then elite youth players. Uh, it's held in January with four rounds. Each team gets one pick per round. And like the waiver order, the draft order is determined by team performance in the previous season, with the teams finishing at the bottom of the table picking first. Again, the idea is to maintain competitive balance to try and help the teams that struggled the season before get players to help them be more competitive. Super draft players, there's it's definitely um, uh, a mixed bag. There's I, a lot of FM players that play MLS. I've seen love the super draft they love building their team through the super draft others don't think you can get anyone that's worth um having in through the super draft so they trade all of their picks that's one you know, kind of have to feel out on your own um, personally i've gotten some good quality mls players i don't recall ever getting an elite player from the super draft but i have gotten players that have uh, done the job and even occasionally gotten some international call-ups. So uh, the Super Draft adds an interesting, another fun element when playing FM, uh, playing MLS in Football Manager. 
And then there's also the re-entry draft. So this is held at the end of every season. This draft consists of players whose contracts have been expired and desire to re-enter the league. They want to stay in the league. And so they'll put all these players that contracts over, but they want to come back. They put them in this draft. And the reality is some players whose contracts have expired will forego the re-entry draft and choose to leave the league. But the ones who want to stay get drafted again the draft order is determined by how the teams finished with the teams at the bottom getting to pick first and then there's the waiver draft so in march you have the squad registration date where mls teams are required to submit their squad registration and this draft will consist of all the players that were waived because they were left out of their final squad registration uh, this is another again effort to help the teams who need to fill some holes in their squad and then uh, again there is the expansion draft this is another fun little component to fm that you don't see in other leagues it's held at the end of the 2019 season only with the default setup in fm this consists of players from mls squads that were not placed on the protected list and each team in mls may protect 11 players so let me explain that a little bit um, when you have a new team coming into the league, the league wants to help that team to be competitive in their first season. And so what they do is they allow that team to choose a player, to choose um, five players. The draft is five rounds. Each expansion team gets one pick per round. So they get to pick five players from all of the existing teams. However, the teams can choose 11 players that they do not want to be allowed to be drafted these are the protected list now there are some players who are automatically placed on the protected list um, but f um, whoever's left the MLS qu uh, clubs choose 11 players that cannot be picked in the expansion draft no existing MLS team may have more than one player selected this prevents MLS teams from having their squads raided by expansion teams during the expansion draft mm -hmm. And again, it only takes place at the end of the 2019 season only. If you're Nashville or Inter Miami, you actually will participate in this draft, and clearly you will not have to be protecting any players as you are the expansion teams. But if you're not Inter Miami or Nashville SC, then you will have to choose 11 players to be protected. And again, you don't have to worry too much because only one player from your team can be drafted in this draft. Now, what are the MLS team assets when it comes to acquiring players? We said general allocation money. This can be used in trades, but it can also be used for fees. For, so signing a player, it can be used for agent fees when it comes to contract negotiations. Now you can also use this to reduce the salary cap impact of a senior contract player. Now I, I explained that a little bit in the last video. But if you sign a player or you're wanting to sign a player whose contract is going to put you over the salary cap, you can use general allocation money to pay down the impact of that player's contract. You can do something similar with designated players and reduce the salary cap impact of a DP all the way down to $150,000 per year. General allocation money can be acquired in several different ways. First of all, there's a league allowance. You get $425,000 from the league you can also get a portion uh, of a general allocation money comes in the form of a portion of a transfer for selling a player to a foreign club so if you have a player that you sell to a to a non MLS club a club from outside the United States then you will get a portion of that transfer fee to go to your general allocation budget uh, you also can get allocation money by qualifying for the CONCACAF Champions League. Now, I'm not sure if that amount is accurate. Uh, in a previous version of the game, it was $200,000. i am not sure if that's gone up. It might have, but um, whatever the amount is, you do, get, um, you do get general allocation money for qualifying for the Champions League or if you fail to qualify for the MLS playoffs. Again, I'm not sure if that amount is correct. It may have changed, um, but... Either way, you get general allocation money if you fail to qualify. And the idea there is to help try to maintain a competitive balance. Now, there also is what's called targeted allocation money. 
Again, this is distributed by the league at the beginning of the season. You get $2.8 million. You can also use this to convert a DP to a senior contract player. So if you have all three of your DP slots filled, but there's a player you really want to sign, you can use a significant amount of your targeted allocation money to convert one of your existing DPs to a senior contract player, which would allow you to sign another designated player. You can also use it to sign a player earning more than the maximum wage, which there now uh, is no maximum wage, but uh, if you can you can sign a player when I guess what I mean by that is you can essentially sign a senior contract player for whatever amount that you want but you can use your targeted allocation money to um, make up the difference between his maximum wage and what his contract actually is again it, this is designed to sort of help clubs uh, improve the overall quality of their squad by signing better players now a lot of it's kind of confusing. Why all this target allocation money? Why can I not use it to buy a play? It's, it, it's quite confusing. So I, I try to explain it like this. This is the best breakdown that I've ever seen. Um, MLS is kind of like a game of Monopoly. Right? So let's say you are Atlanta United. Right? Now, how do you win at Monopoly? Well, first of all, you have to get stuff from the bank right so the bank we're going to call the bank major league soccer that's the league they control the money uh, they're the ones who kind of control the board and they set the rules for the players and so what do you need to buy players well you need money right well to get players uh within mls he gives you what i like to think of as monopoly money right that is your allocation funds your allocation money so to win in Monopoly, what do you need? You need properties. Well, you use Monopoly money to buy properties. You use Monopoly money to buy houses. You use Monopoly money to buy hotels. And that is how you acquire items in Monopoly from other MLS teams. So if Atlanta United wants to buy a property from the Houston Dynamo, they have to use the Monopoly money that MLS gave them. The reality is MLS function is a single entity. It's not really 24, 26 separate clubs. It's one entity. And that has been defined through the court system. Like this is how it works. There was a legal case that determined this is how MLS works. So MLS actually owns all the contracts of all the players in the league. Now, if Atlanta United say wants to buy a player from Palmeiras in Brazil well Palmeiras is not going to take monopoly money they are not going to take allocation money that doesn't mean anything to them so well the league has to use their real money to pay for that and the league the only player the only entity in our game of MLS monopoly that owns real money is the bank it's major league soccer so MLS would actually then take real money, go and buy the house or the property from Palmeiras, give it to Atlanta United, but Atlanta United has to give MLS some of its monopoly money. And that's really kind of the best way to sort of explain how and you know why MLS is set up the way it is. It's again, it's not a bunch of different clubs. It's one entity where the the league owns all the contracts. So it's not the clubs don't own the contracts. They do pay sal a, a portion of the salaries, but MLS actually pays a good amount of most of the player salaries. And so that's really kind of the best way to sort of explain how MLS works. It is a little confusing, but again, all of these rules, I believe, kind of makes it more interesting, makes it challenging because you are having to turn over your squad. You, you're, you have to make difficult choices. Do I sign this player to a really big contract? Or do I try, do I just let him go? Do I trade this player? Do I trade for this international slot? It, it really adds a dynamic to the game that, in my opinion, adds to the replay value. You can play, I have more fun playing a long-term game in MLS than I do in any other single league uh, in FM. So that'll kind of end this 
part of the video series. I do hope to, in the future, make uh, some more videos showing gameplay, how I acquire players, how I go about making trades, how I go about preparing for drafts, that sort of thing. But if you do have any questions, anything you'd like for me to maybe do a video on to answer, please post them in the comments. But this is Uncle Sam FM, and I am signing off.